today it's time to take a detailed look at the Mercedes EQS SUV supposed to be the top electric luxury SUV at Mercedes so to speak a GLS EV with Thomas on Autogefühl for you this in-depth view with a driving part and here we can see on the exterior closed front grille star pattern they have a very round design i think a problem is that it might look a little bit less premium due to that but they do it to increase aerodynamics to improve them is it worth it would like to hear your opinion of that in the comments in the lower part we have a quite sporty note and with a nice blue color here today the light strip goes all the way across and this one comes then also with the digital light with an extended high beam function here in this very high spec we have today the length here is 5 meters 12 or 202 inches that's longer than the bmw ix by the way however at the later stage there will also be an eqe SUV coming which will then be shorter here you can see long wheelbase these side steps here they have an aerodynamic function because underneath the air is being channeled in a better way then then the tires here 20 to 22 inch wheels these here are the ones in the middle 21 inch and we have here the crossover wheel arches but not in this off-road style but painted then in black so a little bit more elaborated and here you can see it has something of the GLS definitely but also something of the EQ family and here's by the way that charging port and charging goes actually quite fast 200 kilowatt is the maximum peak and 10 to 80 percent state of charge is about 32 minutes at a very good public charging station for this 108 kilowatt hour net battery in the rear here we have this let's say visor alike design going all the way across with a light strip it's interesting also with this spiraling effect here at the sides and the contrasting black lower area this one says eqs 580 what does it mean this is the top model actually there will be no amg version of the eqs suv formatic it's all-wheel drive because we have one electric motor in the rear and one electric motor in the front also the same accounts for the EQS SUV 450 has a little bit less horsepower a little bit less power and then this 450 version is also available with rear wheel drive only if you want to keep the price lower and it's also better in the efficiency and in the range in good temperature climate and so on we can calculate with some 500 kilometers or 300 miles in winter times so far it doesn't have a heat pump yet I expect they will retrofit it to let's say a facelift model or something at later stage they have to because in winter times when it's really cold actually the range ranges are quite heavy at this moment well which one would you go for for the top high spec version or would you also maybe fancy a rear wheel drive only version might be also more fun you know when accelerating out of the corners and so on well but this one here the EQS 580 how quick is it and isn't it a beautiful spot here at the red rocks close to denver colorado just 30 minutes outside the city and also with a different color and yeah you're already seeing it with sunglasses when you have the white exterior color then the black panel grill here looks like the car would be wearing sunglasses <laughs> doesn't it very interesting so this contrast is stronger and both the blue vehicle and the white vehicle here have the amg line exterior you could also go for the base or electric art and then this lower area would look a little bit more subtle this here the sportier look in this side profile you once again see this night package with the dark frames around the windows also the black mirror caps and interesting here this is the one without the side steps here and i think it works both ways actually maybe with the side step looks even cooler well as it also has an aerodynamic advantage it's also not too bad yeah sometimes the air suspension makes strange sounds doesn't it so what what would you prefer the blue or the white one and would you go with or without side steps well and sometimes you can have fun at the same time learn something about the vehicle because <laughs> when you have here the parking brake engaged <laughs> it's like the low rider style i'm not saying you should repeat it with your own vehicle my point is 
you see how the car shakes up statically. You see the air suspension, you know, really softly evening that out. And that to me is a sign of that's how an air suspension is supposed to be. If you have a vehicle with air suspension, it should be that soft that you have this nice shaking up effect that you really feel, yes, this, this is a soft and good air suspension. We'll find out more about that in the driving part. If it's too soft or if it's exactly right, I'll tell you more about that later. And now the most special technology function, the rear axle steering, either 4.5 degrees, the rear axle in the opposite direction or optional 10 degrees. And look at that, when you look at the rear axle, so I'm turning the front wheels, of course, and then the rear wheels in the opposite direction. And that kind of fakes a shorter wheelbase. It also looks amazing. You directly see it, you know, like opposite direction in the front wheels at lower speeds, at higher speed, it would be then in the parallel direction. And this one really leads to, you know, agile driving while driving slowly or also to an extremely narrow turning circle. You can, you can take a look at that now here on this parking lot. So this is a huge vehicle, you know, it's five meters 12 long or two and two inches. And look at that. It has such a narrow turning circle for such a vehicle. Sometimes you feel like you would be turning just, you know, on standstill. You can almost turn around 180 degrees like a U-turn in the middle of the road. And with this kind of a vehicle, that is very impressive. The only thing that I really think is like leading in a totally wrong direction is this option um, mechanism, you know. When they put the rear axle steering in this vehicle, it is there hardware-wise. And the unlock from 4.5 degrees to 10 degrees is software only. And that's, to me, customer scam. Okay, you know, the manufacturers go in this direction that they also want to be like these software companies. And then they also want to sell some subscription models for, you know, constant cash flow and so on. But to me, when I buy a car, I want the feature in. And, you know, when I bought, when I bought the car, I want that feature if it's in there, you know, you know what I mean? So, yeah, not sure if this is going in the right direction. You can understand it from a financial standpoint. Yeah, but from a customer respect standpoint, uh -uh. key fob feels quite heavy, so uh, it's actually good quality. Flush door handles, so they come towards you, also with a sound like. Uh -uh. <laughs> the door closing sound. Quite okay, quite good. Not too bad, not too good. There's also soft clothes available, but not on this very vehicle here, spec today. Then inside of the doors, this so-called Neotex material is like a, let's say, slicker microfiber. It really feels very nice. Also looks great. And I love that, like a matte wood with a printed star pattern. But these, these are real stars you can also feel. That is awesome. Less awesome here, capacitive control inside of the doors, no haptical feedback. This is one button. That's a way Mercedes is not going in a good direction, I think. Steering wheel with hashtag capacitive BS buttons. The bright styling is, of course, pretty cool. You know, that looks quite amazing. In this case, we also have animal skin seats. However, there are also article seats available, so they would have a you know, similar surface, but are more sustainable and animal friendly in bright black or gray styling, depending on the market, if they are available or not. You have to check the configurator when they are all online. And here, seating position, this is different to the EQS sedan. Here you have a more upright seating position, therefore it is way more comfortable than in the EQS sedan. I really don't like the seating comfort in the EQS sedan. Here it's definitely better. Headroom with 189 or 6 or 2, still okay, quite good. And then here we have this panoramic roof and there is, yeah, you know, I li really like this bright interior. You have the shade when it's really hot. And when this shade is removed, then you can also open it completely. And I think it's good when you have a panoramic roof that you can actually really open um, <laughs> and have that shade for really, really hot days. Just this slider here. And you know, this top console looks amazing styling wise. But to control it while driving is not that good. At least you can, let's see if, if the internet connection works. Close the sunroof. I'm sorry, but this function is unavailable. 
Not sure why this is unavailable. Not, maybe it's a marketing. I have seen it. Or maybe does it work with opening the sunroof? Open the sunroof. I'm sorry, but this function is unavailable. I know sometimes it does work, sometimes it doesn't. Um, yeah, but you can't really trust on that. So controlling the car while driving is sometimes an issue. And that also counts here for the capacitive buttons on the steering wheel. You don't have a feeling for what you're doing. That's really the theme, you know, it looks all fancy, but when you control something, you might get problems. Also here sliding with the volume and so on. Who wants to slide the volume? I don't. Do you? In the overview with this wow effect, definitely here the 580 version has the hyper screen as standard. Otherwise it's an option and I can just encourage you to keep it lower trim and take the vertical screen without this hyper screen. It's $8,500 a euros extra. If you just have the screen in the middle, you don't have a passenger screen, which no one needs basically, I think, or do you think otherwise? And then you can have more decor element here. That way you also have a lot of black piano like I use. It looks amazing, but to me it's more distracting while driving, I think. I love here the star pattern with the matte wood, once again, also in the middle console. That is so awesome. And also here how it resonates when you slide it open. And underneath here, the cup holders, they are adaptive, but not that good for glass or heavier bottles or something. They don't keep them tight. Then there's the inductive charging in the very front and here two USB-C chargers actually. They also have this illumination in blue. Then here start stop button, volume slider, but this is again one button key. Just here the hazard lights is one. This is a nice animation, right? This is one button because that's just mandatory by law. Then Neotex surface material, you can slide open it like this, slide opening and two more USB-C chargers. Oh, the batteries are already loading. Here the hyper screen infotainment system. The software itself will also be the same with the base infotainment system. Temperature control always stays here in the lower area. And we have also a nice reaction from the ambient light to that, for example. Yeah, you cannot turn dials, but it at least stays always in that area. And then this is like the home menu. Interesting are these off-road gauges, for example. They look quite fancy that you can see how the car is turned, for example. And then you have settings here where you can, for example, change the sound experience. We will do that while driving. You can inside and outside. <laughs> so yeah, we talk about this uh, while driving. And here you can also change the ambient lighting and have interesting settings, which also, of course, even more appear than at night. So the system is not too complicated. And you see here, it's also basically fast enough. When you want to use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, it's also possible. You can choose wireless or wired. I usually go with wired. And the Burmester sound system is actually really very nice. Let's listen to that. And bit not active ah there we go oh jfk is speaking yeah ah it's a great sound wow that's a great sound man can just recommend the sound system the instruments always have like a strange angle i would prefer them to be more upright i think but the visualization is quite cool this is the classic view you can also have sports gauges like this or for example this understated view hmm, that looks Amazing. And then also the map full screen. That is quite helpful, but only works for the car internal GPS or this fancy off-road gauge. So I was just about to open the rear door for you and then suddenly the vehicle closed itself off. I know, I don't know why. And I had my hand here and I was like, oh my God, you know, so, um, but now I'll sacrifice myself for you. Uh, okay, that's not pleasant, but it doesn't kill you. But I mean, when you now think, you're not like really here, but more like a close here. And then it's maybe a hand of a child that can get very ugly. So not a fan of this solution. However, I'm a fan here of the inside materials of the doors, also in the rear, the Neotex once again. This is so lovely, looks great, feels great, awesome. And once again, the wood with the star pattern, that's great. And do you hear that sound? Listen to that. There's speakers underneath the vehicle, you can deactivate it. You can set it on or off. And this is like a sound you get on the interior and, and the exterior. 
It's like this, I'm a spaceship. Do you hear that? <laughs> Not sure how, it, uh, how you really feel, hear that on camera. Do, do we hear that, Michelle? We do? Yeah? Okay, cool. So tell me what you think about this. Um, yeah, and look at uh, the rear bench. So we know that the EQS sedan has a problem. It looks luxurious in the rear, but it's one of the most uncomfortable rear uh, seating areas in the automotive industry. I really have to say that. EQS sedan. Because, you know, with the battery package and with the, um, uh, with the rear, you know, back, back part here of the seat. And, but here, yeah, that's definitely better. So you sit more upright, it's more relaxing. You have decent leg room here and the more upright position is so much better than the EQS sedan. So when this is available, no matter if you're a fan of sedan or SUVs, you know, not everyone is a fan of an SUV, but when you really put the facts, comfort and also how it drives and the features it offers, when you be decide between EQS sedan and EQS SUV, and some do decide that, you have to go for the SUV for the seating comfort alone, indeed. So, um, I mean, there are more comfortable cars here also in the rear, but this is really decent. Um, I love here the, oh, the microfiber cushion. That is my favorite feature and um, that makes it also so much more comfortable when you maybe have a chauffeur ride or something or a shuttle ride or maybe like the kids are here back there and oh, this is so relaxing, soft and um, it also hinders a little, you know, it, you don't slide on that around so much. You know that always like when you have a sliding back restraint and then, and then you wake up and then, oh, everything hurts, you know, this really helps with that. <laughs> um, the middle part here, um, yeah, stiff seating surface and you really feel that here. So not too comfortable in the middle part, but it works space-wise. Then you can fold out this smartphone holder cup cup holders <laughs> uh, what's that like side ah this is for the ski hatch okay interesting they put the strap right here so this is here how we can put a ski hatch right there and then here there's a climate unit for the rear two usb c charger so it's a very expensive vehicle and you have here decent seating comfort but considering the price of the vehicle I think comfort should be more luxurious here in the rear. What's your take? And yes, you can also electronically adjust the seats here. Again, with no haptic feedback, but you can see you can slide this part forward or the other two thirds, for example, to make more trunk, trunk space or more leg room. So that is possible. And remember, there is also a seven seater version available for this vehicle, although there won't be too much space in the back there. The only thing is like, hey, Thomas, can't you make it more comfortable? No, I can't. I mean, I can't put this back. This is the you know, most backward position. I can just put it more forward. Yes, that looks weird. Thank you. <laughs> now to the trunk or boot. 645 up to 2,100 liters. This is then here the cover and we have a beautiful beige or bright interior also in the trunk. But it comes with a catch and I wanted to have this live for you actually. <laughs> these not so beautiful uh, tissues and we did put them on there uh, because we had to protect the trunk we were, we were just putting our suitcases in and just you know from the street you know here from the rollers everything was dirty so we had to prepare the trunk then and clean it all over again so then yes you can see this <laughs> nicely cleaned bright floor yes it's a bad idea it looks great that's not a good idea, I can promise you. <laughs> and here, the width is a good meter of 40 inches and the length is even more here at 1 meters 10 or 43 inches and the overall height right here at the highest position is yeah, 76 centimeters or 30 inches. So that's actually quite decent. Underneath here, we have some space for a charging cable, for example, and then we can actually fold the seats from here with an electric function here. Left and right, yeah, press it, let's go. Ah, that looks beautifully orchestrated. So, and the total length to the seat as I would be driving is indeed here, this full ruler stick, two meters or 78 inches, and then we can also lift them up again. Magic. And as I said, a seven-seater would also be available. 
if it really makes sense with that vehicle, with the space you have in there, I doubt it. So I would rather stick with the five-seater version and then have more trunk space. Well, and we also have another interior for you. This then is the darker, the black styling in the front here with these beautiful microfiber cushions as well. They are very, very comfortable. In this case, once again, the animal skin seating. You can have both electric art or AMG line for the interior. This one, once again, electric art, AMG line. You could then also go for the sport seats, but they are once again, as I said, not that comfortable. This on also the electric art steering wheel in the black styling. There is also the AMG line steering wheel available then in the interior AMG line with two spoke design. Looks a little bit sporty, yeah. So steering wheel wise, the AMG line is a little bit cooler actually. Um, yeah, which one would you prefer? A darker styling or a brighter styling? And you can take a look at the rear as well. Woo! <laughs> yeah, and um, looks quite similar, but we have here this rear entertainment system and of course I put the best YouTube channel on there. <laughs> yeah, hit subscribe if you haven't done so far. So you can also really watch YouTube then here on these rear screens if the car of course has the web connection then. Another interesting thing here is in the rear that we have this additional middle console. We can fold this one down and then I have another screen here and yeah, you can, for example, also control it then from here. And then it is basically mirroring the screen on the left side. You can also take this one out and take it in your hand. And I'm not sure if we ever had a car with the with this amount of screens, you know, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, six screens in that vehicle here. Well, I would say for five people in that vehicle, this is like six screens for five people, but this one here is also the seven seater. So, and it's okay, right? <laughs> so this is the button here to fold the seat forward to access the six and seven seat. And you can see here, even the passenger seat goes forward and then like this. And then you also have access to it. I put the second seating row a little bit forward that I could still sit in the second seating row. And the question is, can I fit behind that? Um, here, this one third, two thirds bit is of course harder to get than here. Um, easier to put this one forward, but I really want to test if it's possible for me. And not really. So when I'm sitting in the second seating row with the minimum setup, I cannot sit in the third seating row. Headroom-wise, I also don't really fit in here. Well, in here, the third seating row, it does not feature Isofix. So the question is, what is it for? Um, yeah, when I put it forward like this, and you can see, um, yeah, but then I can't use the second seating row. So what is the use of that? So here, by the way, three top tethers for the second seating row, um, and here two times Isofix. But then here, at this one, it is basically just the use I mean, it's not tall enough for adults. You can't use it for Isofix. It's then, you know, like, I don't know, young children who are big enough not to need a special child seat, but are still small enough to fit here. That's the only use case, actually. So I actually think, well, I'll stick with a five-seater. Oh, what, 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 what do you think? And when you have the third seating row up, it looks like this, so some space then left here you can also store then here the cover that's actually a nice solution so and you have to manually push them back like this and you also have to put in the head restraints um, yeah like this so there we go and then this one yeah we've seen a better solution in the BMW X7 for example um, and here yeah you know then it's flat you lose a little bit of trunk space of course as I told you but then they also forgot, like, why can I pull it here? And I mean, not everyone has, you know, so long arms like I do. And then they really have to reach over here and then to the side. It's like, the hell were they thinking, you know? So, yeah, like this. Um, of course, if you want to do it from the trunk. So in this case, then, rather the better solution is to go to the side. Then again, you have to open the open the door and then have this one here sliding forward once again. 
This also takes time. And then access it from here. So, and yeah, so I think they didn't really think about a real practical solution for that, didn't they? Welcome to the Mercedes EQS SUV driving part. Yeah, glad you made it to here. <laughs> and we have a beautiful mountain road here close to Denver, Colorado. And the first thing that comes to my mind is, wow, it's so super silent in here. This is a quite rough road terrain wise, you know, it has no like potholes or something, but just the surface, you know, the, the, the tarmac surface. And it's still super silent in here. This car also offers rear axle steering and you do feel it, especially at lower speeds because it feels like the car, you know, would be coming around. It's, you know, is it a necessary feature? It depends on where you live. You know, in the US, for example, it's not really necessary to have that one. It's 4.5 degrees or optional 10 degrees. But for example, in Europe with narrow basement garage or something like that, it is a more necessary feature, definitely. The handling is really nice and also the steering feel. It gives you a natural feel. You have to steer quite a lot, but that's usually with Mercedes, but it gives you a natural feeling. So no artificial steering, in the, uh, no artificial steering feel. That's the way I want to take it. Air suspension gives you a nice, a soft ride. I love that. At the same time, the car doesn't shake up too much. And although it's a big and heavy SUV, well, the batteries are placed in the central part of the vehicle, in the lower part. And that's why you have a good low center of gravity. And it makes these winding corners also really nice. Highway driving after this part here. And we can also put here to the sports mode, for example. And then the suspension is set on a stiffer note. I also have more reaction from the throttle pedal. And this is actually a helpful feature here for these winding roads because then the car also stays more upright. Wow, accelerating out here, out of the corner, is really something really amazing. Uh, it has some stronger rear motors, so it has some kind of a rear wheel bias, especially when you are in the sports mode. So although you have a big and heavy SUV, it's a lot of fun. Um, almost like a bicycle and motorcycle mix it was so you can have a lot of fun driving this one although it's big and heavy and so on really really nice um, there are of course more fancy features to activate while driving not sure if you really need these but you can for example set the ambient lighting here to this um, multi-color and then you have this energy shine and then it reacts here when I'm putting more throttle or am I on the brakes and so on, then <laughs> the ambient lighting is reacting. Um, yeah, you don't need that, but you can have that. And the same, same goes also for the sound experience. So far I was concentrating on, um, you know, on, on silence, but you can also go sound experience here, um, inside and outside. Yeah, let's do it. Silver waves, for example. Hear a little bit of feedback or with the vivid flux, for example. There's more like spaceship style, or the roaring pulse is a more low frequent sound. You hear that quite a lot as a person inside the vehicle, but on camera it's hardly audible. So I tested before. Silver waves is actually most audible on camera, so yeah. Maybe like that. Oh, that's like a, that a yellow McLaren behind us. Probably want to catch us very soon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have a lot of power here with the 580 all wheel drive. I said one electric motor in the front, one electric motor in the rear. That's really nice to have. Still some rear wheel bias. And I mean, it's of course not that I would be hunting these curves here, but I don't get sick. I have no lower back pain or something. And I still have fun driving this vehicle, although it is big and heavy. And that's one of the really, really crucial things. Brake feeling and pedal feeling is also decent. So all the hardware components, all the driving feelings are really excellent. I can just, just say that. Is it less sporty than an EQS sedan or EQE sedan? Hmm. 
I would say with the electric vehicles, since you have this low center of gravity with the SUVs as well, the difference is not that large. So if you think about a comparison, Mercedes S-Class versus GLS or E-Class versus GLE, the sporty driving difference is larger than we would have here, EQS sedan versus EQS SUV because of that battery pack is always there and it doesn't matter than that much if the car is higher you still have a sporty decent driving feeling that's of course really really cool we'll keep you updated with the energy consumption figure later on when we did a full loop actually this will be very interesting um, it won't be better you know, than with the EQS sedan that's for sure but I don't suppose it will be much worth either actually of course it always depends on the on the conditions here once again you have a beautiful panoramic route i hope you also enjoy it with me together yeah it's really a lot of fun and if you need that sound here it's subtle it is more present in amg versions for example we had it in the eqe amg or in the eqs amg the EQS SUV will not receive an AMG version, but it will get a Maybach version. Maybach, listen and repeat. Maybach, that's the German lesson for, me, for today, because the CH we don't spell, uh, pronounce like K, but K. So Maybach. <laughs> yeah, sometimes German language is kind of weird, and yeah, it's also hard to learn. English is so much easier to learn for if you, you know, if you're not a native speaker, definitely. So I am enjoying here the ride in the EQS SUV, and I would say this is the winding part and you know driving fun. What they've done with you know all the hardware side and suspension wise and so on. But what about the normal thing you would do every day, being more on the highway, going straight? And now to some highway driving, of course, very, very relevant at the moment at 65 miles per hour. It was like 110 kilometers an hour. So one of a typical highway speed, especially here in the US. And it is super silent in here. That's always great with noise insulation. That's something that Mercedes can do very, very well. Very relaxing because we hear nothing from the outside. And yeah, there's a light truck coming to pass us now. And you hear really nothing. That's good that you have the blind spot monitor. I think it's red triangle in the side mirror and you heard it when I put the turning indicator. Then I also have this acoustic one. Oh, that's a Denver Sheriff. Good that I kept the speed limit, right? <laughs> yeah, and it's really relaxing also from the suspension, the air suspension, when we have some waves somewhere. It's really evened out very well. And that's what I love about Mercedes air suspension. They are real air suspensions and they tell you, hey, I'm an air suspension, I'm the soft deal. That's cool, because sometimes nowadays air suspensions are tuned so harsh that you don't feel their air suspension anymore. And I think when a vehicle has air suspension, it's supposed to give you this floating feeling, you know. I've set the cruise control and also here with the active lane keeping assist. So you can get the highest elaboration of the assistant systems here so far in level two is that. And you're supposed to keep your hands on the steering wheel still. And you see here these interventions are really smooth, not intrusive, and the vehicle is kept in the lane very easily. And you can also here induce this automatic lane change here. So I did do nothing besides just using the turning indicator with tipping it and then the car you're supposed to bear right yep now it cancelled not sure why exactly um, oh that looks fancy with the Kia there with the yellow daytime running lights in the front that looks fancy right Michelle you've seen that nice <laughs> yeah by the way nice panoramic view here um, towards the Rockies close to Denver so for cruising highway cruising here is an ideal vehicle and one of the key things here about the EQS SUV if you compare it to the EQS, it's so much more comfortable here. You know, especially with the comfort seats, not the sport seats. I can really recommend you not to go for the sport seats, neither, you know, in the sedans nor in the SUV. And here you just sit more upright, you know. I feel the comfort in the EQS sedan, in the EQE sedan, is not really where it should be because the seat ergonomics are not that great. And here, 
it's definitely way better. So I think just from this comfort feeling here, the EQS SUV really leads the normal EQS sedan. And we also talked about what happens, you know, what happens for the for the rear bench. That's even more significant, actually. And of course, in the good noise insulation, together with the air suspension, is really a perfect high cruiser. And it still has a good wind coefficient. Um, and that's really a key thing as well, because the consumption with electric vehicles is so much about wind efficiency and a little bit lower speeds, already a third of something. And here, when you're at highway speeds, about two thirds, you know, is like the deciding factor of the of the actual range, what wind efficiency the car has, you know, that, that is really a very, very crucial thing. So here now, when I'm, for example, canceling the cruise control, when I'm going on the brakes just slightly, then I have some recuperation here in the normal recuperation mode. And yeah, meanwhile, I felt that it's actually quite cool to have a normal, you know, slight recuperation. It's, it's also some kind of a comfort feeling um, but you can always have the stronger recuperation here, left pedal or rolling, no recuperation. Or then when you, what was it, yeah, holding both pedals, intelligent recuperation. And this can at some times be a nice thing in between. Um, because in that case, when the vehicle is in front of me, there is recuperation happening. Like now, I'm not hitting the brake but the car is decelerating, although there's no cruise control set. Look at that. That's phenomenal. That's awesome, right? I did not use the brakes at all. So that's a very cool thing indeed. Um, and can be like a way of negotiating between one pedal driving feeling and let the car roll. The only thing that is not that good with that is that you, it is not predictable, you know? And some want to have a very predictable feeling of how is the car decelerating that it always does the same and not sometimes this sometimes that you know no car in front of me i left lift me my foot off the throttle the car is rolling you know and again this is a good thing on the one hand but it's making the behavior of the car less predictable in a way so you can argue pro and con um would like to hear your feedback on that definitely but yeah highway wise wow what a great cruiser that is and at the end of our long trip we will present you now the final consumption figure with our tested ev range so what about the real world driving test ev range for today indeed very interesting i can score here around 36 kilowatt hours on 100 miles that's about 22 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers that means a real world range here in nice temperatures at 500 kilometers or 300 miles. That's actually really decent. Again, at this moment, will be worse in winter times. But I hope when they put a facelift on this vehicle, that will also include a heat pump. And then this will also be even out. So actually quite a decent range then here for our test today. Ooh, and here in the basement garage looks really fancy with the ambient lighting. Always better to see when it's a little bit darker. This is also featured in the EQS sedan. If you want to check out that review, here it is. And a direct SUV competitor would be the BMW iX.